at 11. Double dose. Flash flooding. <laughs> Trees toppled. And power knocked out to nearly a half million more customers. Live team coverage as more severe weather charges across our area. And there's more rain ahead. Good evening to you at 11 o'clock. I'm Stephan Hall and I'm Natalie Pascarella. First, the dangerous heat now storms leaving a mess in its wake. Hail in New Jersey, cars swamped in Brooklyn, streets submerged in Queens and geysers of water shooting out of storm drains in Staten Island. And that's just the least of the problems right now. A live look now from Storm Chaser for cruising through Monmouth County. You see it's dark folks. That's at one time more than 300,000 customers lost power tonight. The lights again are out. Rose hazard are everywhere. We have our team of reporters and photojournalists fanned out across the area. Let's begin with Storm Team Force Janice Huff. Janice, the morning commute not looking so good. Yes, Stefan, there's more rain back to the west in Pennsylvania, down towards parts of Virginia. This cold front coming through is going to take its time. Uh, rain showers exist over parts of the tri-state back towards Allentown and York, Pennsylvania. So we still have several hours to go, even until midday tomorrow. There'll still be showers in the area. Right now, it's pretty quiet in the city at 74 degrees. You see, we have the clouds clouds. The dew points at 72, but it's rather comfortable right now. Uh, some steady rain, no severe weather, steady rain across northern New Jersey and some bigger thunder showers back through eastern Pennsylvania bubbling up uh, towards central New Jersey. So there are some isolated downpours to go that will swing through the area tonight into tomorrow morning. So far, the rainfall totals are just uh, for tonight, uh, anywhere from two to nearly five inches of rain from all the storms that came through from Pennsylvania into New Jersey and the Hudson Valley. As we track the storms, there's still the potential overnight for some isolated downpours, not as widespread and severe as what we saw earlier today. But yes, the morning commute could be wet at eight o'clock in the city and White Plains out across parts of Long Island. That rain will shift offshore by 10 a.m., but we're still left with clouds and a few spotty sprinkles here and there throughout the day tomorrow. We don't really clear out until uh, we get to Wednesday. Flash flood watch remains in effect until tomorrow morning. More on our forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. Janice Huff, we'll see you in a little bit. Thank you so much. Here in the city, the storms triggered flash flooding across all five boroughs. Take a look at this time lapse video showing that nasty weather as it began to roll in through Midtown and through Lower Manhattan. The rain falling so fast, roads turned into rivers. This is what drivers face during the evening commute on the Cross Island Parkway. News Force Rana Novini joining us live in Gowatas tonight, where flash flooding caught a lot of people off guard. Rana? Yeah, it certainly did, Stefan. And right now, the floodwaters have receded. So at first glance, it appears that nothing even happened here. But earlier tonight, all of this was underwater, including the cars that were parked here on the street. And I want to zoom in on this vehicle in particular. This is uh, an Uber that was left here. The driver had to abandon it because the engine was flooded. Just an example of some of the problems we saw tonight all across the city. Spreading through thigh high flood waters. People in Gowanus watched as rain turned roads to rivers. I was scared because I was in sandals, so you couldn't see what was under you, but you could, like, I mean, the water was at my waist, or almost to my waist. Here. Water, water was here, like close right. the window. The water inundating cars in just seconds. This Uber driver stands barefoot and stranded on Carroll Street, hours after he and his passenger escaped the rising water by crawling out his car windows. I am scared. We are scared, and I still am feel so sick. A similar scene across the city for cars and commuters. This woman in Williamsburg was captured on cell phone video, undeterred. Rain struggling to keep up on Staten Island and on the Long Island Expressway. Cars had to come to a halt for water that was just too high. Train riders weren't safe either. Water rained down through the Court Street station and commuters on an LIRR train tried to avoid getting wet. <laughs> Cleanup now underway in apartments in Gowanus. The good news here, as quickly as the rain moved in, the floodwaters quickly moved out. Hopefully the landlord will, will help us clean some stuff because our apartment and then their apartment in the back got flooded. And that woman also telling me tonight that they'll be looking into getting flood insurance for their apartment after all of this. And on a positive note, at uh, this hour tonight, we don't have any reports of anyone being injured in these flash floods in the city. 
reporting live tonight in Gowanus. Rana Novini, News 4, New York. Okay, Rana, thank you so much. The storms didn't spare Long Island, where rain came down in buckets. Ocean Avenue, living up to its name in Ronkonkoma. This is a video of drivers charging through the floodwaters there. In Shirley, a tree came down onto a house on the William Floyd Parkway. You see the damage there. And in Mastic, PSEG workers were spotted removing a tree that fell onto down wires. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the storms had knocked out power to hundreds of thousands of customers in New Jersey. But from this live look here from Storm Chaser 4 in Long Branch, we're seeing power has come back on there, but we're also seeing it's really dark, folks. We understand a tree is down there as well. We are staying on top of all of these situations. We want to move to Jersey City now. More flooding left the streets underwater. Just take a look. A number of cars had to be towed after the flooding damaged their engines. I want to get to News 4's Jackie Beckford live in Edison, New Jersey, with what kind of damage people are facing now, Jackie. And Natalie, a PSCNG truck just pulled up behind us here. Power's been off for at least four hours, and many neighbors blame it on this tree you can see over here that has been uprooted, toppled over into power lines. They tell us it caused an explosion, a fire, and of course, they lost power. Take a look over here, though. I'm going to have my photojournalist, John, come over here where you can see much of nothing because that's the Edison train station right across the street. It's in the dark. It's been that way, like these homes have been for much of the evening. John Ziemba says that was a power transformer exploding, catching fire in front of his neighbor's house. This was scary. They had a lot of sparks and everything. This uprooted tree toppling into it, the apparent culprit. The rain and the wind, the, the rain on the windows, you couldn't even see out the windows. It was that much rain. It was so heavy. It left this entire block on Central Avenue, including the Edison, New Jersey train station across the street with no power. Commuters getting off trains in the dark. But even those on the road had hazards to deal with. This car's tire was flattened and front end damaged when it hit a tree that fell over on Route 18 in Marlboro Township. Massive hail coming down in Oakland, New Jersey right now. Huge hailstones pummeled this guy's car. Trapped in the car, hopefully my windshield doesn't explode. And lightning rattled homes and nerves in North Brunswick. Back here in Edison, John Ziemba is heading to a hotel, afraid of more compromised trees coming down and more electrical fires. The other tree is about this size, um, so if that splits off, uh, there's already hanging bra branches, so if that splits off, I don't want it falling on my house and I don't want to be there. And again, workers just showing up here, PSCNG workers to this street, Central Avenue, about a half a dozen people or so without power, just specifically on this block. This yellow tape has been up here throughout the entire evening because there are dangling power lines here. So they've been trying to keep people off the street. But of course, drivers, we've seen many of them not heeding that, trying to drive down the street to get to the train station to pick up their loved ones. Hopefully, though, the power situation will be resolved shortly now that crews are on scene. We're live in Edison, New Jersey. Checky back for News for New York. All right, Checky. Let's hope so. Thank you. And at one point, all three of our major airports were under a ground stop because of this weather. Let's take a look. As you can imagine, it's causing some delays here. More than four hours there. You see at JFK, almost four hours at Newark and about an hour and 19 minutes there at LaGuardia. Stefan. And that's certainly going to ripple into flights tomorrow morning. Meantime, 24 hours later, Con Ed crews still working to restore power to customers who were knocked offline during yesterday's excessive heat. But it might not be too much longer. We just checked and Con Ed says repairs are 99% complete. Company said it deliberately cut power to 33,000 customers in Brooklyn yesterday after engineers noticed feeder cables in that part of the grid were overheating. The utility says it was trying to prevent a larger blackout. The power was out all night and all throughout the day today, but that explanation really didn't seem to satisfy families who had to sweat it out in the heat. I'm very hot and disturbed and aggravated. I think for a developed nation like the United States, we should have better infrastructure. On the Upper West Side tonight, nearly 100 customers are without power around Lincoln Center near the 69th Street substation. The electricity went out yesterday. You may remember this is part of the same area that was part of the Manhattan blackout last Saturday. Con Edison says the heat damaged equipment in the area this time. Well, some good news. Trains are back to normal right now on the two, three, four, and five lines between Manhattan and Brooklyn tonight. But earlier, look at this. It was a much different story as dozens of riders had to wait in the pouring rain just outside the Franklin Avenue station there in Brooklyn. And that's where the MTA said that heat caused a switch to malfunction. Service was suspended. That forced folks to wait for those buses there. And strangers became friends as they tried to coordinate their rides to get out of the humidity and the downpours. 
it's hard to it's hard to keep my cool right now, but I'm trying. I'm standing here in the rain. Luckily, she was nice enough to want to split an uh, Uber with me. So I don't understand what the MTA is doing at this point in time. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Like I am mad, pissed off because I'm trying to get to my kids. Well, it took crews a few hours to restore service and get those trains back up and running. Now, the NBC4 New York app is the tool you need during any power outage or any severe weather. We kept our subscribers informed. We pushed all those breaking news alerts right to their smartphones so you can stay ahead of the weather. Just download it for free today. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm.